this is Dennis Polis with another in the series of Open Philosophy videos. In this video we're going to be discussing objectivity and subjectivity in truth. It's often thought that to be truthful is to be objective without any subjective elements. Of course this is impossible. Truth is a property of knowledge and knowledge requires a knowing subject and a known object. There must be a person who knows and something that that person knows, the object. Thus, subjects and objects are inseparable in knowledge and therefore in truth. Let's think about the most objective kind of truth that you can think of. Maybe it's science, maybe it's objective news reporting. Let's take science. In science, the scientist chooses what he's going to study. The experiment may tell him about the world, but the experiment which he chooses to perform is one that interests him as a subject. Again, with news, however objective the reporting may be, however accurate it is as to the facts that it does report, there is a selection process. There is a selection as to whether the story will be covered or not covered, where it will be placed in the newspaper or show, and within the story there's a selection of elements to tell. Each element may be true and accurate, but by selecting some elements versus others, a certain kind of picture is formed, which would not be formed if different elements were chosen and those which were reported were excluded. Thus, however objective a story or an experiment or a science may be, it is also intrinsically subjective. Does this large degree of subjectivity, our choices, the fact that we approach from a certain perspective, that we have these experiences but don't have those, do these subjective elements invalidate our knowledge? Do they make it false? Can it still be true? The answer is yes, it is true, it can be true, and here is how. In each instance of knowing, there is an interaction. The interaction has on the one side the subject who approaches the object. The subject approaches with a certain background, with a certain perspective, with certain choices. And then there's the object that is approached. That object has ways in which it can act and interact with us. And in the interaction that leads to our knowledge, it reveals itself. Thus, our knowledge has both the subjective elements that we bring to it and the objective elements that are enforced by the object that we are coming to know. There's a fallacy here, and the fallacy consists in using divine knowledge as the criterion for human knowledge. Even atheists are prone to this fallacy. God knows everything exhaustively. There is nothing that God does not know. But humans know in a very limited and fallible way. Yet, when we speak of knowing, we speak of a common experience. The word is only understood by others because they also have the experience of knowing. That's how language works. It works by shared experience. And so when we speak of knowledge in a human context, we're speaking of human knowledge with its limits, its frailties, and its subjectivity. That subjectivity it limits us to knowing some projections, as I explained in video one, but not knowing others. As we try to move around an object, to approach it from different perspectives, we get a deeper and fuller knowledge. And we're able to form a model of what that object might be like, and that model is always fallible. It always includes some filling in of details that we don't know based on other things that we do know. We work by analogy to fill in details. And so the knowledge that we have are, are, is a fallible knowledge, 
and is an incomplete knowledge based on models that we've partly experienced and partly constructed. Thank you.